want to do a comparison between two similar cameras and just kind of highlight the differences between the two of them. Not really trying to determine which one's better, but just show the differences, right? And the two I've selected is the Olympus OM-2N and the Minolta X700. Both of these cameras were released around about the same time. The OM-2N was 1979 and the X700 was 81. So, pretty close, right? Being released around the same year, these cameras have features and specifications that are very similar. Similar. There are many technical similarities between these two. There's no point in going through all of that and boring you to death with it. On paper, they're very similar, okay? In actual taking them out and shooting with them, though, there's some major differences. And first difference that everyone usually notices between these two is just the size, right? The Olympus is a very compact, small platform compared to the X700. And this kind of gives the Olympus a little bit of an advantage because that smaller form factor is just easier to, you know, have in your bag, right? In physical comparison, there's really not a significant difference in the, in the two. But there, there's just some slight variations that make the Olympus easier for me to handle. And it, it, it's as simple as this. If you'll notice where the viewfinder, and then of course obviously the lens assembly, lay on the body of the camera, the Olympus has much more purchase on the right hand side of the camera because everything is kind of shifted a little bit to the left in comparison to the Minolta. So if we butt the two together on the viewfinders, you can see there's just a slight offset. And that offset makes the Olympus a little easier to handle, despite its small form factor. Where the Minolta makes up its ground is in the glass that's available for the camera. There are more options and a greater variety and a greater variety of affordable options of glass for the Minolta versus the Olympus. Having the ability to remove the hot shoe from the Olympus, I enjoy because I am not a flash photographer. Uh, I rarely ever use a flash or anything I would need a hot shoe for. So being able to remove that really helps increase the compactness of the camera. Once we get to the shutter speed selection, on the Minolta, you know, you have your typical shutter speed selection dial. On the Olympus, your shutter speed selection dial is around the collar of the lens. With the shutter speed selection dial being around the collar of the lens, it makes for selecting both your aperture and your shutter speeds a little more consistent. It takes a little getting used to, but you know, once you adjust to it, it's fine. There's nothing to complain about. Looking through the X700 viewfinder, 
we will notice that we can see our aperture selection through the aperture window, which is a nice handy feature. In auto mode, you can see that the shutter speed is indicated on the right hand side. As you adjust your aperture, you can see the shutter speed gets reflected in its adjustment. And once you are under, you get the flash of the under and you also get a flash of an overexposure. And outside of auto, when you're in just manual mode, it is just highlighted like this. viewfinder has split prism focusing with a Fresnel lens around it or in my opinion focusing accuracy split prism or split window focusing is uh, the, <laughs> the best for manual focusing because it really gives you a point to verify your focus on all right, now looking through the uh, Olympus viewfinder, we can see that there are some major differences here, right? For your shutter speed when running in auto mode is there on the left hand side. Any number in blue is an indication that it's too slow and you're going to get um, camera shake. Above that is, you know, good to go. You will notice that there is no visual representation of your aperture selection. Like uh, in the Minolta, you have the aperture window. Um, because of the way the lens is laid out on the Olympus, it's just not possible. And in manual mode, you get this nice little indicator of over or underexposed or correct exposure. It is just a matter of making sure that the needle stays in between those two limits. And once you're outside, you know, you're overexposed and once you're below it you're underexposed just like the Minolta the Olympus features the split prism with a Fresnel lens surrounding at the end of the day which one is better and that's what the majority of people want to see from a comparison or a, you know, an analysis of the two. And I've kind of got bad news for you because there isn't necessarily a better one when you're comparing these two. Um, it really just comes down to your personal preferences and which one fits you and your needs better. The you know, the first aspect of that, your personal preference, I, whatever, I don't, I can't predict that, right? But which one fits your needs better from a statistical standpoint? They're both going to do that, right? There, there's no real difference between the two of them. So in conclusion, this video was pointless. Huh. That sucks. Yeah, maybe next time.